I love Hank Gunther. I love his brother, uh, Ron Gunther, and we're blessed to have had both of them, you know, be at North Central College, because this place, North Central College would not be what it is today without Hank Gunther and Ron Gunther. When Hank Gunther arrived at North Central College to coach football, the program had less than 40 players and had won just one game in three years. But then athletic director Al Carius thought Hank could turn things around. He certainly had the dualism of mind and body, but I, I think his real gift went much, much deeper. His ability to connect with his student athletes at a much deeper level, at what I'd call the spiritual level. He could you know, understand their, their basic uh, character and really worked at that level to really motivate them. Hank spent three years recruiting student athletes. And in 1975, his brother Ron Gunther joined him as co-head coach. That season returned a 5-3-1 overall record. Ron would go on to become the director of admission. He was very creative, uh, very entrepreneurial in developing programs and new marketing approaches in uh, admissions. And then he had an opportunity um, a couple years after that to move in alumni and development work. And that's where he really hit his stride and prepared himself very well for later moves as director of athletics at, at University of Illinois. The increase in football success, however, exposed one very noticeable problem, the current stadium. Old wooden bleachers out around the football and track. Those bleachers at any game time back in the late 60s or early 70s maybe would have 100 people in attendance or 200. But the college at the time was in a difficult financial situation. Enrollment numbers were up, but the money just wasn't there for a new football stadium. I know that I went to a divisional meeting and heard uh, our divisional chairperson, Dick Thurston, and, I, and he wasn't kidding. It was a, made a shocking statement. He said, you know, we do not have enough money at this time to buy chalk, and he meant it. And then, a racetrack in Carpentersville closed. North Central College could have the grandstand, but only if they could move it to Naperville in three weeks. So we went up and with trucks, uh, uh, really uh, donated by Don Deachin, and with the help of our student, student workers, football players, anybody that would help, faculty members, administrators, everybody else, and went up there and hauled, took the, the structures down, brought it down here, and built our own stadium. And they built this stadium that was basically a iron and steel stadium. They put it back together. And that was really the start of changing the culture for North Central College athletics. Both Gunthers and the entire North Central College family never stopped to think that this couldn't be done. They went forward with enthusiasm and hope, turning the football program the facilities, and the college itself into a contender. I've been involved in higher education administration for over 50 years, but of all the people I've hired, Ron Cunther, I can say unequivocally, is the best person I ever hired. The real spearhead was Hank Gunther in that whole project to pull it together. And in the, in, in the process, again, he saved football, he helped save the athletic de department, and in my opinion, he helped save North Central College. It is my honor and pleasure to induct Hank and Ron Gunther into the North Central College Athletic Hall of Fame. Did anybody time that? <laughs> because, Mary, way out of line. <laughs> I, I really can't add a whole lot, Hank. I mean, he covered, he said, you know, we were gonna talk about uh, stuff of who says what. 
and uh, we should have done a better job of that. He, still, he, took, he took all of it that I had away. I mean, what can you say? Um, it's uh, a great honor. What can I say? It's been over 40-some years I've stayed in touch. Um, but we had so much fun, and we worked so hard. And I'm glad Rich could make it, because I agree it was your greatest hire. OK, Rich? I, there's no doubt in my mind it was a great hire. Because I, I think I saved your butt more than once. Is that, is that true, Al? You know that. Hank knows it, too. Uh, but um, I was told um, absolutely no stories. And Hank, Hank did it. And first of all, I see women and children. We couldn't tell them anyway. Um, so you didn't have to remind me of that. But, you know, <clears throat> it just doesn't happen the way it's some, some things happen. I, <clears throat> Hank and I, um, we met at an early age. Uh, <laughs> he's, been, uh, he's been my best friend for 71 and a half years. And um, the first three or four, I don't remember much about him. But um, we stayed in touch. And we both, uh, I played at Illinois, he played at Illinois State. I used to come over and watch him play. He'd come over and see me uh, when he could, because they were playing night games and we were playing day games. But um, we stayed in touch. We both knew we were going to be coaches. I mean, once it's in your blood, it's there. And <clears throat> I went one direction, he went the other. And, but we stayed in touch. And every time we got together, we talked on the phone or we met. We talked about, wouldn't it be great to coach together? I mean, it's one of those things. It's more common today than it was back then. But I'm doing my shtick. I'm out at Boston College. Uh, I think I'm going to be on a path to become the head coach at Boston College or someplace. And uh, Hank, at what were you, 28, 24? Which one? You're confusing me. 27 and a half? OK. So he, he became head coach here. And then it looked like there might be a chance that we could probably might be able to pull this off. So uh, Hank started it. Uh, he, he got here, we came out, he and Jimmy Covert, in fact, came out to spring practice when I was out there. And we talked about all coaching together. And the next thing I know, a position opened up. And um, I was thinking about it, and then I started getting these calls from Mr. North Central, a guy I knew at University of Illinois, because Al was running track and cross country and I was playing football at Illinois, is the number one most enthusiastic, upbeat, go get him guy but Al. So Hank, six Al on me, uh, <laughs> and telling me how great this thing was. And so I fly out. And I didn't think I saw anything that great. Uh, <laughs> they, 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 had, they had about 750 students, and no stadium, no track, and I fell in love with it. Uh, there was no pressure. Think of it. Uh, and Hank, Hank, uh, I want those records split. He wants to take credit for, I want my four years before his four years. But uh, in all honesty, uh, I couldn't, it, it, it changed my career, quite honestly. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me. So they started it without question. And um, I packed up and uh, came west. Um, you know, started thinking about, quite honestly, I was going to build a football program. What Hank didn't tell me, we were also going to build a stadium. I mean, we literally built the program from the bottom up. But, you know, we didn't do it alone. What I found when I got here, we had an administration of a number of people that all contributed to that stadium. Richard is one of them. Rich Lewis is here. And we started with our president, Swing. <clears throat> he interviewed me. He... Uh, basically spent a lot of time and effort in developing me as an administrator, but he did it all of us. All of us were somewhere between 29 and 35 years old at the time, very young administration president. It was, it was uh, we had a saying, you know, we didn't know what we didn't know, uh, number one. The other word we didn't know is can't. We thought we could solve every problem. And then unfortunately for President Swing, we also didn't understand the word no. Because, because we, we couldn't. We were doing stuff that we shouldn't have been doing, quite honestly. Uh, but uh, he, he, he offered me the job. He said I could coach. And he knew what a winning football program and an academic and athletic program could do. 
So the next stop for me was Rich Lewis, who was my first boss. And, and he said, what do you know about admissions? I said, I can't even spell it. I said, <laughs> I said the one thing I, I, I that's a true too. So, uh, so what I said, but what I can do is I can recruit, because that's what I've been doing. So Rich tutored me, became my mentor. He uh, became my confidant. And, and as he moved up the ladder uh, administratively, and, and I think he spent two years in student services, which about killed him, uh, I then became the director of admissions, and again, Gail and Rich allowed me to coach, okay? The third guy in this equation was Roger Cron. I don't know if Lori is here. Lori, there, I, I can't believe it, but Roger passed away here about a, a, less than a year ago. He was the uh, cheerleader. He actually, we actually gave him a hammer once in a while, but he, he couldn't even handle that. So I don't know how you live with him, okay? <laughs> uh, but he was a, so upbeat and so positive. And our lives were in coaching, and with we, we, had, we had goals for you know, trying to get to 900 students, whatever. It was up and down. He was a stable guy in the whole deal. Um, we couldn't have done it without, uh, without him. Um, and then the young guys needed a stabilizer, and that was Jim Osborne. For those that might remember Jim, Jim was the vice president for business affairs at the University of Illinois, retired. Our business affairs person, John Bobbitt, had passed. He came in at about 68 years old, and uh, he was the one that kept us between the curbs most of the time. Um, the other group that was instrumental that Hank mentioned somewhat, and that was our coaching staff. Uh, I came, um, Hank was the head defensive coach, but he also was the head coach at construction. That's, and so he had on, on his side of the ball, he had Vince Martino who came with me from BC. He had Tommy Purcell, and I'm glad to see his son is here. He has passed as well, and Pat Gora. And uh, I was head coach of the offense, um, but I was also in charge of recruiting. Okay, so we had construction, recruiting, and I had Lloyd Krumloff, Joel Stellwagen, who played with me at Illinois, and Dave Cudden. <clears throat> now, every Monday, our staff, four of us, would sit in my office in Old Main, and we'd talk about the week. Hank laid out our construction, when the concrete was coming in, who was doing the tractor, who was laying brick. We went through that. I went through, where are your recruits? Who's calling who? When are they visiting, etc. And then lo and behold, about halfway through, there was a knock on the door, and in came the hamburgers. And here came the french fries and the milkshakes. It smelled like a big McDonald's all the way through Old Main. President Swing did not really like it, but uh, that was Mr. Cron sending up our lunch. And uh, we couldn't have made it with a great group of people great coaches, but better people. The whole deal, the whole deal falls in place with our team. And it's so good to see some of our guys. We've stayed in touch with them. But you know, <clears throat> this was a time, and still is that way in Division Three. There's no big scholarship. There's no academic services. There's not uh, all of the thing, training table. Our guys, because they came, because they had a passion for football. And um, when we think about it, and we pushed them hard. We pushed them as hard as they were getting pushed at Michigan or any place else. So our kids were training in the morning, we had the weight room, but then Hank stumbled over those, those darn lights. And uh, we told the kids, uh, we, needed, we needed labor, we needed people. So if you can imagine, and for any young person that's here, let's think about this, at, you're in college for those guys to give up a Saturday morning and meet us at seven o'clock with a little bag lunch that had a, basically, I think, Hank, we got an apple. We finally got an apple out of uh, somebody. A uh, sandwich and a can of Coke. We got on school buses. We went up an hour to Gurney, and I just was watching the receivers and the skill kids because I didn't want to lose any fingers. Those kids, those kids attacked that stadium. We went straight, three straight weekends, and then all spring, during the day, off class, in between weights, in between, we worked to get that stadium ready to go. And um, it was an incredible group of young men. 
And all I can tell you is that as I reflect back on it, um, you know, I think the institution, we put a, a different kind of energy into North Central at the time and our community. But I also started to think, what did it do for our guys? Well, our guys were bonded in a different kind of way. We, we, we came out tougher mentally and physically. And uh, that was really the turning point to uh, chasing those championships. So I thank you for listening. He took most of my time, but I was going to get it back, okay? Thank you.